I'm sort of just and that's a fish on oh that's a nice fish stay on stay on stay on Hi guys and welcome to Piscator UK. Well guys, join me today fishing for sea trout on the shore and it's a particularly dull autumn's day today uh, which is good, it gives a bit of cover, there's a bit of wind on the water a little bit of a wave and uh, you know that can only help the situation. Now there's only a few days left of the sea trout fishing uh, in Scotland, uh, which ends in the end of October, and as winter fast approaches, for me that just signifies some exciting fishing to come, whether it's on the river, still water, or the occasional trip sea fishing. But today, this could be my last sea trout session of the season, so the weather was quite favourable today so I thought I'd give it a bash. Now the method that I'm going with today is my trusted bombarder. Uh, I do like to use a bombarder when targeting sea trout. Uh, it's been very successful. For those of you that are new to the channel or that haven't seen the bombarder being used before, so I will put a link in the description of a video that I did uh, which goes into more detail on how I like to fish the bombarder, areas I look for for sea trout and also questions that have been asked over the years by viewers on how I like to fish the bombarder or you know they maybe gave suggestions etc and I've answered their questions so feel free to check that out guys whenever you want so today uh, the tide is on its way out it's probably halfway through the ebb tide so about three hours until low water and I'm just going to work my way along the little coastline here. Uh, the, the ground that I'm fishing over today is predominantly just clean sandy bottom. Uh, there is an occasional splattering of weed and rocks uh, which is going to be areas that are target as well uh, for the sea trout but predominantly clean sandy bottom and as I work my way down the coast it will get a bit more weedier uh, with some rocks as well and by that time maybe the tide will just start to turn and that will probably be the end of my session because you know being autumn daylight is at a premium and yeah we'll just see how it goes hopefully you never know I may get a, a late season sea trout which would be very nice. So all I'm doing just now is just fan casting, working my way along the shore and I'll be casting where I'm going to be walking so that I do cover as much water as I can. As I wade out a, a little bit deeper I'll have the occasional cast you know into shallow water sometimes sea trout tend to move behind you when you're wading out uh, and also they can give themselves away if they're chasing any bait fish. My setup today is I've got a 10 foot lure rod and this is the steelhead iconic. It's a nice light weight rod and I've got that matched up to a 2500 size spinning reel or fixed reel, fixed spool reel and this is a pen battle 3. I've got on that 20 pound braid as my main line. I've got a little shock leader about six foot long of 12 pound fluorocarbon and that goes on to my sinking bombarder. This is 20 grams. And you'll notice that it's a, it's a free running bombarder. I don't like to lock it in place. Many people think it's a big deal because it slides up and down the line, but because it's weighted, because this is weighted, it doesn't actually slide up and down the line because the weight carries the line forward. You stop the line, you get turnover of your fly. 
and it fishes just as well as any other elaborate rig that people do to fish the bombarda. That goes to a little rubber bead onto a size 6 swivel and then I have approximately 8 foot of 8 or 10 pound fluorocarbon. I like to fish a long leader just to keep it away from the bombarda, especially when you work it near the surface. And at the moment, to start off with, I've got a little homemade bait fish pattern, representing a sand deal, I suppose. We'll see how that goes. If that doesn't work, after a few casts, or don't get any hits, or indications of fish, especially if I see a fish and I try and cover it and I get no indication, then I'll swap to something else that's been more productive in the past, shall we say. Now fishing the sinking bombarda, because it sinks, I just, before I start retrieving it, I just let it sink maybe, you know, three or four seconds. I am fishing over shallow ground. You know, it is quite shallow here today. Uh, where I'm casting, it's probably only six foot deep anyway. And because it's sandy bottom, if it hits the bottom, I don't really mind. Now, like I say, those of you that haven't seen the Bombarda before, you'll notice that when I cast out, I actually stop the line with my hands. Uh, and I do that just before the Bombarda hits the water. And because I'm using an 8 foot uh, hook length or leader, by stopping it with your hand, that just allows turnover of the fly or your lure or whatever it is that you're using. Uh, you can use a small strip bait using the Bombarda, or you can use a soft plastic. So yeah, just by stopping the line before the bombarda hits the surface of the water, it just allows turnover and then your fly or lure or strip bait, whatever you use, that will just turn over behind the bombarda and it reduces any tangles. Now when I fish the bombarda guys, I normally just mix up my retrieves. Uh, sometimes do little jig and pauses when I'm bringing it in or sometimes I just do straight retrieves, it all depends. Uh, but I never keep it the same uh, on each cast. Just to make the lure or your fly just work erratically uh, can often induce a take from an unsuspected sea trout. Now those of you that have never seen the Bombarda before, you may be asking why choose the Bombarda? Well, because the bombarda is weighted and it does fly through the air like a rocket, it is really good at carrying a, a small lure like a fly or a soft plastic or a, a small piece of strip bait. Uh, that is the reason I like it. You can fish relatively light tackle, uh, like today, you know, a lightweight 10 foot rod. and. Because of the 20 grams in this bombarda, you, you can cast a long way. Now, although you can cast a long way, most of the fish that I catch or I've caught with the bombarda, they've been in close. They've been within maybe 30 yards when you're bringing a bombarda in. And what tends to happen, or that I've found, is the sea trout may follow your lure or your fly for a considerable distance and then obviously as you're approaching shallower ground with the lure or your fly I don't know what it is I think sometimes the sea trout thinks it's a last ditch effort and they've got to catch that obviously it thinks it's a bait fish before the water runs out and they'll have a go at it uh, I'm not quite sure, but yeah, they tend to follow it a good bit before they commit to taking it. And I think, like I say, that's maybe just because the fish is running out of water. And, you know, I normally, if I do see a follow as well of a fish following the lure, but it's not committing, I'll tend to wind in a little bit faster as I bring it in. So guys, I've just, had, just changed my fly and I've put on the uh, 
easy sand deal. This is a a fly that I've got real confidence in. Got many fish on it. Let's hope it can uh, do the business today. You probably notice that I randomly cast about, and it's just to cover different water. Uh, don't like to keep casting in the same spot all the time. So maybe I have a couple of casts at like 3 o'clock, a couple of casts at 12 o'clock, a couple of casts at 9 o'clock. And then I'll just work in between, you know, those different casts, just to cover water. And I'll always cast to where I'm going to be walking. Oh, I had a follow. See how he comes back. It's literally about 30 feet from me. Uh, that's a fish. That was the same one that... Oh, it's off! <sighs> that was a nice fish. That was the one that followed. It must have been hanging about there. And then I cast again. And I thought, just thought to myself, right, I'm going to wind, wind in a little bit quicker. It's obviously... I don't know. It was obviously thinking to itself that something wasn't quite right, so I thought, quicker retrieve. Ah, it was just a pity that it got off. Yeah, I've just, I've moved a little bit further out, not by much. I've got a little reef over there that's semi-submerged. Uh, definitely holds sea trout around that. I'm sort of just, that's a fish on. Oh, that's a nice fish. Stay on, stay on, stay on. It's a uh, lovely and golden colour. This is a nice fish. Just holding in that tide here. I just went right through my legs almost.
yes well wow, that's a golden fish oh, that smashed the lure right oh shaking Nice, easy unhooking. Ah, oh, the good old sand eel pattern. Brilliant. Hey okay, guys, we're trying to uh, have a look at this wonderful fish. Hopefully it doesn't do a runner. Beautiful sea trout, guys. Lovely golden colour. Beautiful. One last look. What colours on it? Thank you, buddy. We'll see you next year. <laughs> oh guys, I was so chuffed to get that sea trout. It was, uh, you know, it could be my last sea trout of the season. Uh, even though I've got a couple of hours left to go. Oh, that was amazing. Just smashed that lure. I cast in. We've got that submerged reef there. Sort of cast to the inside edge of it. I was literally two winds and wham. I always like to carry a, a little comb, uh, especially using lures like this or flies like this that got some hair hackle, just so you can tidy it up. You know, the fish can uh, make a real mess of it sometimes. Give you another look at the fly, guys. That was the one. Done the damage, served me proud over the last few years. That's a fish. Yeah, another fish on, guys. That's excellent. Certainly not as big as the first one. Well, that's a nice fish, though. Keep it away from the camera pole. <laughs> I knew there would be another one close to that reef. Should be ready now. Yes, just a little guy, but more than welcome. Yes, lovely little sea trout, nice silvery colour. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, we'll have another few casts here for sure. Oh, 
shot. Oh, no. Whoa, brilliant. Now that fish is making for the It's not shown itself, but it just it feels a powerful fish. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Looks a bit dark again. Oh, it's off. Ah. <laughs> See you, buddy. Never mind. Let's tidy this fly up a little bit. It's a bit jacked up. Gonna have a quick move. Just moving over to this little bay here, and then you'll probably see the the reef in the background there. I'll come back to that and fish round it on the incoming tide. But yeah, it's been a good session so far. Uh, you know, two fish landed, two fish lost, and they were reasonable sized fish. The ones I lost. Yeah, but yeah, brilliant fun, and uh, hopefully there's maybe another one in this bay. Could normally be quite productive, uh, especially after the tide turns as well. Try a bit deeper this time. Yes! <laughs> oh! This feels nice. Heading into the shallows. Off. No, it's not. Just shot towards me. Oh, I thought I got off there. Just <laughs> they must have thought I was a snag. Here it is again. You're just wanting to be hooked. And landed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, twice it went towards my legs. Must have thought I was a snag. Yes. <laughs> this is just awesome. Awesome fishing, guys. Another lovely fish. They're all lovely fish. Second biggest of the day. Absolutely beautiful. Get this guy back. Thank you, buddy. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Hit that.
Beautiful. Swimming towards me really quickly. That fish almost took that on the splash. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Another beautiful sea trout. It's only, it's probably just touching the pound mark, but what superb fun. A way to fight another day. Thank you, buddy. Guys, I couldn't think of a better way to end this video and obviously just releasing that fish there. It's been a superb day. Uh, so I've had eight hookups today. Uh, four fish landed. So 50-50, not too bad. But, you know, end of the season. Uh, I was made up with this session today, it was just a short afternoon session and uh, yeah, I couldn't have thought of a better way to end the sea trout season this year. Guys, if you want to see how to tie the bombarda uh, in a bit of detail, it's super simple and it's how I set up the bombarda myself. Uh, check out the link below and you can see that video there. Guys, thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time on Piscator UK.